Hi, if you are new to this channel, I'm Ava and I am a final year medical student at the University of Melbourne. And today I am filming my first Q&A video. I'll actually be splitting this into two parts. So in this video, I'll be answering frequently asked questions about medical school admissions here in Australia. And in the next Q&A video, I'll be addressing questions regarding medical school life um, and other general things. I decided to film these Q&A videos because my most watched videos on this channel are in relation to the application process into postgraduate medicine. Since I've uploaded those videos, I have consistently received a lot of questions about medical school applications, and I figured that if I collated all those questions into one video, it might be helpful for current and future applicants. I hope this video is helpful and I'll get started. The first question is, what undergraduate degrees are most beneficial to get into medical school? I think I'll start off by saying that the vast majority of students in my cohort have a background either in biomedicine or science. And I think that just makes sense because those two degrees are very science oriented and they also give you good foundational knowledge for medical school. However, I don't think that those particular degrees are as beneficial as they used to be in the past because in the past, uh, prerequisite subjects were a thing you needed to have completed certain subjects in order to be eligible to apply to universities like University of Melbourne. And the benefit of doing biomed, for example, was that the prerequisite subjects were embedded into the curriculum, but they have abolished that. And so now you could pretty much do an entire arts degree with not a single science subject and you would still be eligible to apply. And then secondly, I think a lot of people used to think that you know science and biomed would help you with section three of the GAMSAT, but now that section three is definitely more geared towards application-based questions as opposed to knowledge-based questions, I can't say now that science and biomedicine gives you a significant advantage. And so I think now is a really great time to just choose a degree based on other factors. One, I think you should really go into a degree that you are genuinely interested in. You know, the more interested you are in the subjects, the more likely you are to put the effort into studying studiously and you will put yourself in good stead to attain a pretty decent GPA for medical school applications. Unfortunately, medical schools, for the most part, look at your GPA and so you can't completely ignore that. The second thing you should also think about is the culture of the degree you're entering into and whether or not you think you would merge well with those degrees. For example, if you are trying to decide between biomed and science, I would say that biomedicine is a smaller cohort, but there's a higher concentration of students who are aspiring medical students. And as such, there tends to be more of a grind set mentality. And so it can get a little bit competitive at times. And I think there's a lot of anxiousness and stress that sort of tends to go around the cohort more so than some other degrees. But if that's the type of environment that you don't really enjoy, then you know maybe science is a better option because the science cohort is a lot bigger and a lot of students don't have that primary aim of getting into medical school. They have different interests. And so it's a good way to merge with people um, outside of your key interests. And um, it's just a more of a relaxed environment. And you also get greater freedom and flexibility to choose from a wider variety of subjects. I think the last thing you should also think about is some medical schools give bonus marks to students who completed undergrad at their university. And then you've got Monash University that only selects students from their Monash undergrad programs. So if you want to really maximize your chances and you want to keep a lot of doors open, you would then consider completing undergrad degrees at a particular university. So for example, if you live in Victoria, I would consider doing an undergrad degree at Monash or Deakin because Deakin gives their students bonus points and then Monash obviously only selects students from their undergrad programs, Melbourne University doesn't really care. I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry. I'm taking ages to answer these questions. If I don't get into medicine on the first try, what do you recommend I do to maximize my chances of getting in in subsequent years? I think this is a concern that a lot of students have. It's that question of what if I don't get in on the first try, then what do I do? I think when you're in undergrad, that whole idea seems very grim, but I just want to tell you that it's really not that bad. And there are a couple of different things you can do to 
try and maximize your chances. First of all, you have to take a step back and think about which parts of your application can be improved upon. Was your GPA low or was it your GAMSAT score that brought you down or did you get through to the interviews but you know didn't get past that stage? Depending on what areas you need to improve upon, the next subsequent years will look slightly different. First of all, Improving your GPA is probably the most time consuming out of the three different um, components of the application. There are a couple of options. One is you can do an honors degree. I think this is more ideal if your GPA was somewhat decent, but it just could be further improved. And I think it's especially beneficial if your first year grades were the poorest out of your three years because when you do your honors year, the universities will then be looking at your GPA from your second year of undergrad to the honors degree. And honestly, I wish I did honors because honors is a really great opportunity for you to expose yourself to research. Also, if you have an inkling of what specialty you would like to go into in the future, your honors year can be a really great way to get your foot in the door and involve yourself in research in that particular specialty. So for example, one of the interns that I know, she knew from very early on that she wanted to do pediatrics. So she did an honors year in a pediatrics research department and she built a very positive relationship with the team there. And so when she was in medical school throughout the entirety of the four years, her supervisor was very keen on getting her onto different projects. And so she had many publications to her name by the time she graduated from medical school. And that can be really advantageous further down the line. And so doing an honors year could be a great idea. Just make sure that you choose an honors project that you're passionate about. It would be such a waste if you don't enjoy it and you're just doing it simply to increase your GPA. Now, if your GPA is just overall quite low and you don't think an honors year can really salvage it, then doing a completely different degree is an option. It is a time-consuming alternative, but if the end goal is medicine and this is something that you're really passionate about, then you know it's definitely something you can give a crack at. So you know I think it's just important to exhaust your options. Now, if you need to sit the gamsat again or you need to work on your interview skills, your options are a little bit broader. You can still do an honors year and study for the gamsat and prepare for the interviews or you can take a gap year. I personally took two gap years and I did not embark on any academic endeavors during those two years. I did not do any study outside of GAMSAT and instead I worked in retail and I did a lot of traveling. And you know, for me, uh, working in retail and traveling really helped me gain particular life skills that I otherwise would not have. I found that working in retail was actually really beneficial for my interviews because when I was an undergrad, I was actually so timid. I was literally the type of person who could not ask for a refund or an exchange. If I was at a restaurant and the waiter served me the wrong food, I would not have the courage to speak up. Like I would just eat it. Working in retail meant that I was exposing myself to a whole plethora of people. You come across so many different personalities and I got placed in some really awful, awkward situations at times, you know, dealing with theft, dealing with really rude, angry, aggressive customers. And through that, I really improved my communication skills. And I think that really helped me with the interviews. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, instead of sort of honing in to GAMSAT and interview preparations and spending all your time on that, if you're taking a gap year, make the most of it, fill it with experiences that you won't get a chance to fulfill um, you know, later down the line when you have more commitments, more responsibilities. Go traveling. If you've had interests that you didn't have time to invest in because you were grinding it out in undergrad, take the time to delve into those and just look after yourself and study for the GAMSAT and interviews on the side and treat it like a part-time job. I know some students, however, would not be comfortable with that and they might feel like they need to do something productive and if that's the case, I mean, by all means, go for it. But I really personally enjoyed just relaxing and um, enjoying aspects of life that I didn't get a whole lot of time to invest in uh, when I was an undergrad. Next question, how many times can you apply into medical school? I think you can apply as many times as you want, so long as you still fit within the eligibility criteria. I think the most important criterion that sort of 
determines whether or not you're eligible is the requirement that you finish your degree within the last 10 years. Next question, are extracurriculars important as part of the admissions process? For some universities, yes. For others, no. Medical schools that require portfolios from their applicants probably do care about your extracurriculars, but um, I know the vast majority of medical schools do not care. It's just, it's not an important part of the application. At no point during the application process do they ask you for your extracurriculars to begin with. I guess the only reason why you might ever bring up what extracurriculars you've been involved in is during the MMIs when they might ask you a question like, tell us a time when you demonstrated leadership skills or tell us a time when you worked in a team. But when you're answering questions like that, you're not necessarily being asked to name um, a formal position you had. It can be something informal. And so it really doesn't matter. However, just as a heads up, once you're in medical school and you're applying to internship positions, uh, training programs, your CV does start to matter. So I would say that once you're in medical school, I would highly encourage you to have various pursuits, uh, get involved in research, do extracurriculars, work some part-time jobs, just you know, diversify yourself. Next question, is it worth investing in a private tutor for GAMSAT slash the interviews? My take on this is some of you will not require a private tutor. If you have been one of those kids that grew up just being really good at reading comprehension and you know, you've always been somewhat skilled in essay writing and you have a science background and you know, section three questions are manageable, then you know, perhaps a private tutor really isn't necessary. However, if you're really struggling with section three or if you really struggle with section two and you just don't know where to start and you don't know how to structure your essays and you just want some feedback, then you might choose to find a tutor. So yeah, I think this really depends on you and whether or not you think you need that extra assistance. Now, I do just want to briefly speak about preparation courses. It makes me so mad when I see companies charging students thousands and thousands of dollars for for a comprehensive course. The GAMSAT is a high stakes exam and so are the interviews. The companies that, you know, sort of capitalize on that, I just I just have a problem with. So I just want to like sit here and say it's really not necessary. Like maybe they will give someone an upper hand and prepare them somewhat better than, you know, if they were studying on their own. But is it really worth like four or five thousand dollars? I'm not entirely sure. Most of my friends in medical school, I don't think any of us really spent that much money on these preparation courses. Now for the interviews, um, I would say it wouldn't be harmful to you know, get a private tutor for just a couple of sessions at the start just to learn how to structure your interview answers and to figure out what type of questions you should be practicing. So you know, that could be useful. I think just have a couple of sessions, go away, practice with your friends, practice on your own because practicing is really the most important part of um, interview preparations. And yeah, I will say that some students have really found those simulated MMI workshops really helpful. So if you are going to enroll into something, something like that might be useful. Next question, how did you look after your mental health during the application process? When I was in my final year of undergrad, I did not look after my mental health. I was in a bit of a rut, but um, in 2019, which is a year when I applied and I successfully got in, I think that year I was a lot better about looking after myself. And when I was in my final year, I would just feel a lot of time pressure. Like I felt like whatever time I had, I needed to use that to do something productive, whether it be to study for the GAMSAT or to practice interviews or to study and make sure that my GPA was, you know, going to be okay. And I just, I just didn't cope very well with that. It, w it was just this really negative cycle. And something that I've actually noticed from some of my peers in medical school are that some of the brightest students in my cohort have a very good balanced life. Like they study until a particular time, they sleep a decent amount of hours and they make sure that they have time to fit in things like going to the gym or partaking in a sport. You know, that was such a contrast from the life that I lived in undergrad because I had such poor sleep. I didn't eat well. I was constantly stressed. I felt like I had to study at all times of the day. It, you know, it didn't work well for me and for my mental health. And so I just think that 
if you prioritize looking after yourself and that means proactively seeking out ways to look after yourself like feeding yourself well making sure you get enough sleep making sure you're seeing friends and family and having some downtime then that will positively affect whatever work you do and also just put you in a better mindset for the entire application process. I do want to say though that if at any point you feel like you're really struggling and it's getting all a bit too much and too overwhelming, please don't hesitate to reach out to a university counselor or to go to your GP and get a mental health care plan and see a psychologist. Um, I know for myself, um, I started seeing a psychologist when I was in my final year of undergrad and it just lifted a huge burden off of me. Next question. Are gap years problematic for admissions? I don't think so. Um, maybe universities that look at your portfolio might um, you know, notice a gap in your education and I don't know if they would really care about that, but I'm sure most universities don't care. Like most medical schools, they don't even know whether or not you took a gap year. They only just know your GPA, your GAMSAT score, and your interview score. I honestly don't think it's going to create a detriment to your application. And like I said, I took two gap years and I did not pursue any academic pursuits during those two years and it was completely non-problematic. So. I hope that's reassuring. I am 35 years old and I am wanting to pursue medicine. What are your thoughts on starting medicine at an older age? I think it is bloody great. I have a lot of respect for mature age students. I think it takes you know significant courage to step away from whatever you're used to, or what, whatever you've put your time and effort to over however many years and to start something completely different and to start a degree that requires quite a strong commitment and you know can be at times very grueling. Now I will say there are actually quite a number of mature age students in my course. I know of people who are in their 30s, in their 50s. I think there are even some students who are in their 70s. I don't think you can discount the importance of life experience in medicine. I think when you enter medical school at an older age, you have a greater breadth of experience and perspective that younger students are not afforded. And I think that makes you potentially a much better communicator and you can probably empathize with patients to a greater extent than students who went into medicine straight away. I think the the life experience and the perspectives that you'll possess going into medicine will be so valuable not just for yourself but also for the people around you so I think it's great I guess like the only like slight downsides of entering medical school at an older age might be that your peers will be at very different life stages to you and so it might be a bit awkward to socialize and fit into that but Pretty much everyone in medical school that I know of are very friendly and inviting and that really shouldn't be a problem. I guess the other thing to consider is when you're older, I assume you would have more commitments and more responsibilities. And so you kind of have to figure out how you would balance that with medical school and you might have challenges that younger students don't. But honestly, for me, I can only think of many positives going in at an older age. So yeah, go for it. I, I wish you well. Now, next question. This is probably the question I get asked the most and it is, my GPA is A, my GAMSAT score is B, what are my chances of getting into medicine? It depends on so many different factors. It depends on which medical school you're applying to, it depends on what type of place you're applying for, CSP, BMP, full fee, or you know, are you an international student? It also depends on what pathways you're taking. You know, there are just so many factors to take into consideration. However, I will say I do have a resource that I downloaded onto my laptop a couple of years back and it was basically an Excel spreadsheet compiling the scores of everyone who successfully got into medical school and basically all these scores are coming from successful applicants who are on the paging doctor forum and it also included columns where it identified whether or not they're a rural student or if they were an honors student etc and they had this compilation for all the different medical schools across Australia. And I got this document off of Paging Doctor. This person very kindly uploaded it onto the forum to help other students. 
And so what I'll do is I'll link it down below. I would recommend you look at that spreadsheet. And what I used to do with the spreadsheet was I would look at the students who had very similar application characteristics. And so I would look for students who, you know, were not an international student, who were vying for a CSP position and were non-rural. And I would look for the students who had like the lowest, lowest mark. Um, and I would sort of use that as the threshold that I was aiming for. So yeah, I hope that spreadsheet is helpful. So I'll link that down below. Now, the last question is, is undergraduate or postgraduate medicine better? What would be your recommendations? I think the main pro of doing undergraduate medicine is that it's obviously going to take you a shorter amount of time, you're going to invest less money, and you'll be a full-fledged doctor at a younger age, and therefore you're starting your career at an earlier age. But then proponents of the post-grad program will say you get those first couple of years of your undergraduate degree to learn to be an adult and gain different life experiences before you fully immerse into medicine. And so you might have um, a wider skill set than someone who went straight into undergraduate medicine, but you know it, that's not always the case either, right? Some students who go straight into undergraduate medicine have a repertoire of life experiences that prepare them well. I think that's really sort of the main uh, differentiation between the two degrees. So yeah, I, I honestly think it just really comes down to personal preference. So you know, I, I think about myself and. I know that I definitely would not have done well in undergraduate medicine because by the end of VCE, I was mentally spent. I was not in a position where I could jump into a five-year degree and just give it my all. Um, and you know, for me, it was only after you know five years out of high school where I felt very sure that I wanted to do medicine and I felt more sure of myself. I knew myself a bit better and I think I also just had more life experiences to make my medical school journey a little bit more smooth. So, you know, for me, postgraduate medicine was perfect. But at the same time, I have peers in my year level who tell me that they wish they had done undergrad medicine because at this current time, they would then be an intern and they just can't wait to start working as an intern. At the end of the day, both degrees degrees will help you graduate with enough competencies to make you a good decent doctor. I'm sorry that's I think that was a very poorly answered question. I am going to finish up there. In the next Q&A video I'll be answering questions about just medical school life in general. I've already compiled a list of questions for that particular Q&A, but if there are any further questions about medical school admissions or about uh, you know medical school life that you want me to answer further, then please feel free to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. I hope this video was helpful and you know as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.